everyone, welcome back to Art World Funky. Uh, this is Burgess and today I'm going to paint a Pandora inspired vista, mountain vista. Uh, I've, I'm using a 90 pound watercolour paper that I've taped off. Uh, it's a generic brand and now what I'm going to do is take my round number 8 brush and wet the whole surface down with water. I don't want it dripping wet with water, I just want it damp so that it can take water. Now what I'm adding here is um, turquoise blue which I love and I'm trying to add it make it darker towards the outer perimeter of the painting and lighter towards the center so that as the um, so the washes are um, heavier and more intense in the corners especially the corners and the outer real edges of the painting on top of that I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to add some um, um, Prussian blue uh, like that and then spread it out. I, what I want is the outer edges to be particularly dark because what I'm going to use is now this is watercolor by the way what I what I want to use is um, gouache on top which is going to be my main medium and I'm gonna let that dry and once that's dry I'm gonna put in uh, a simple mountain range in the back very very simple mountain range again using turquoise blue and but this time with a dash of uh, cobalt blue added to it Once that's semi-dry, I take a fan brush, a oil painter's fan brush, an oil painter's fan brush, and using that, I stipple on to the foreground uh, using Prussian blue uh, trees, uh, not trees, sorry, um, leaves, using this fan brush. This actually was a larger fan brush. I don't remember, I don't know what size it was, but what I did was I took a pair of scissors and cut it down so it was easier to handle for smaller paintings because I tend not to work large anyway so here I am stippling in, an, in a haphazard manner um, twisting the brush any which way I can sometimes using the it's vertical to the paper and sometimes on its side as well and the paint is fairly thick almost straight out of the tube no water added at all the paintbrush does have a bit of dampness to it but um, when I dip it in the water, I do um, uh, I do use tissue to sort of dry it off, and then I put it into the paint. So this is uh, Prussian blue. Now what I've done is I've taken the same Prussian blue and added white to it, because I want some white foliage on top of the darker Prussian blue foliage. And I'm using the same sort of um, brush strokes, and I but I will change it any in a minute. So this color is Prussian blue with a bit of white added to it. Now what I've done is I've taken green and I've added white to that so I've got some green foliage in there as well. There's no water in any of this mixture it's all straight out of the tube and dipped into one and dipped into the other and made into a, a mixture. Of course the brush is washed in between wash in between colors. Now I let that dry, each layer is dried, the, uh, then I switch to another brush, another, this brush is the filbert brush, but it's not really a filbert brush, I actually made it, it was actually initially a round brush, which I um, cut up and uh, used a pair of pliers to turn into a filbert brush so that I can use it to create clusters of foliage. You notice the, uh, the fan brush didn't create clusters, this actually creates clusters of foliage, so I used red in there. Um, whatever colors I have in my palette. So I've got red, green, yellow ochre, um, I've got green with white added, Prussian blue with white added, and yellow, yellow straight from the tube. But I do wash the brush before I dip it into the next color. And before I dip it into this next color, I do dry it off. Here I'm adding yellow ochre as foliage too. So it looks like there's clusters of leaves on this tree. And again, I'm not being too precious about where the marks are going. It's 
it's haphazard, the way trees usually are. Now this is burnt sienna added on top as well. And straight, again, straight from the tube. I'm just going in with a bit of black again because I hope, I, I felt like I was losing some of the black, the darkness in the, within the trees. So I'm adding that back in using Prussian blue and black. Now I've changed brushes to a hog brush and I've got a mixture of um, very dark, intense green with a bit of um, brown added to it, burnt umber. And um, I'm just marking down where the branches are, but I will darken them, branches of the tree are. On the other side, I've gone straight in with a darker burnt umber color with black. And I've, I'm putting the branches in so that some of the leaves are behind the, 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 branch, the tree branch and some of them are in front of it. Now what I'm doing is adding a bit of white here just to give it, give it a bit of texture and light. Texture to the branches and light. And light to the branches. I'm doing that on the right hand side because I'm hoping that the light is coming from the right and uh, the shadow is therefore on the left. So I'm gonna be darkening the left hand side a bit with darker paint. So I'm adding more branches in the bottom there using a uh, what looks like it's actually a, a detail brush it's not the best brush i don't like it very much but it works for this particular painting and now i'll switch to my homemade rigger which i told you about in my earlier videos and i will tell you how to make them one day but i'm using that to create little branches here and there i really like this rigger actually um it, it works all as well as a properly real rigger brush that you find. It holds enough paint and really does the job well. As you can see, it leaves branches thin at the ends and you can do the thick bits as well. I'm just darkening the left hand side now just to, because that's where the shadow is. Just there on the left hand side there. Yeah, I'm sorry about the shadow on the bottom of the um, of the painting. Now, what I'm doing there is um, uh, just darkening the base of the mountain so it looks like it's anchored onto something instead of like it's floating in the air. Now, yes, you, you see, notice that some of the um, uh, gouache did reactivate. So you have to be careful when you're working with gouache. It can very easily reactivate. I've added, now I'm adding um, gouache white just to create the impression of a waterfall waterfall there just pure white paint and now with a sepia pen um, just adding some birds in the distance and now I'm going to remove the tape hopefully this is an easily removable tape and there won't be too much ripping but um, well we never know we can never tell so yes um, so this is my um, Pandora inspired mountain vista I do hope you enjoyed it if you did, please consider cons subscribing to my channel because I will be doing others like this as well. And uh, please press the like button and share and, uh, and the bell button for future videos. And uh, yes, and please again, don't forget to subscribe.